Conservation International recently finished a documentary about Cambodia's Thanh Sap Lake and ways to ensure food security. With us here in our VOA Washington studio is Peter Stonia, Senior Director of Visual Storytelling at Conservation International, to talk more about these issues. Peter, thank you for joining us here. Glad to be here. Before we talk more about these, let's look at a short clip from the documentary that you and your team put together. Great. It's dawn on the Tonle Sap, Southeast Asia's largest lake. Because it's the rainy season, all is flooded. Only treetops are visible. Below the surface, fish nest among the branches of a vast, inundated forest. Mao pursues his morning catch. His day starts much as it did a thousand years ago, as portrayed in the wall carvings of Angkor Wat, located just a few kilometers to the north. Then, as now, these waters fed not only those who live here, but the entire region. Yeah, as, as we can see, um, you know, the Tanle Sap Lake is impressively Southeast Asia's largest lake. But why did you pick out of the many environmental hotspots in the world the Tanle, the Tanle Sap Lake of Cambodia? Well, Conservation International uh, chooses to focus on places where conserving the environment will have uh, major human benefits. And because the Tonle Sap is also one of the largest inland fisheries in the world, uh, that's why we chose uh, the Tonle Sap uh, to be one of our key projects. And I, I see that you work very regionally as well. So you, you work both very locally with the communities and you work with governments. Um, what would you say have been your greatest effect or success stories? Yes, um, you know, we'd like to say at Conservation International, you have to have your feet in, your mud, in the mud and head in the sky to be effective, mm -hmm. which Bravo, means Bravo, you Bravo. need to align uh, your project from the village level all the way through the government level and even international organizations to be really effective. So we um, work first and foremost at the village level because that's the front lines of conservation uh, to build trust with communities but also to do experiments to um, create prototypes of things that work. Once they are working then you start to build trust, you know, up the chain all the way through the government. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest issues is uh, fish decline. How did you address this in, in this situation? So um, reasons why you have issues with the fish populations in the Tonle Sap are complex. Um, but they often have to do, you know, could be summarized by villagers needing money and therefore overfishing and uh, deforesting. When, when you clear a forest, you, you no longer have nurseries for the fish, so that has a really major impact. And uh, Conservation International worked with several pilot programs of villagers to give them alternatives, to, such as creating fish farms, such as um, uh, giving them the knowledge to start uh, cooperatives to sell fish paste so that they did not have to overfish. In fact, now they make a better living, a more sustainable living, uh, given small amounts of training and small amounts of investment from Conservation International. Mm. Um, but one of the other factors is regional. You, know, you, you discuss about the dam issues in, in the documentary, and I was slightly, you know, given your name, Conservation, um, it seems to me that you sort of support some kind of dams or some acceptable dams. What are, what are your take on that? Yes, um, so you know you have your threats at the lake level. Uh, you have issues that are more regional, as you say, um, climate change being one, but also damming being one. And when it comes to damming, you know, uh, it's known that Cambodia needs energy. Uh, Cambodia needs hydropower. And again, we can serve for the benefit of humanity, not for conservation's sake. So 
what we are looking to do is work with the government to find a good balance between food security um, by protecting the Tonle Sap and energy security by having dams. So the goal is not to say we don't support dams. The goal is to look at good planning and look at um, more sustainable dam design. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you find that uh, more sustainable designs are actually cheaper than other designs that um, uh, create environmental damage um, mm. but produce less energy. Mm. So this is my last question. I mean, I've, I've seen many documentaries about the Mekong and the Tonle Sap River. Um, the one that stands out here in this documentary is you make this connection between um, the current situation and what you can learn from the ancient Angkor civilization, the fall of the Angkor civilization. Can you tell us more about why you made that connection? Yes, the uh, Angkor Wat is a metaphor, really, for what can happen to us today. And uh, Angkor Wat, the, the fall of Angkor Wat, was actually very much tied to environmental issues. Environmental issues resulting from overdevelopment and development in a way where you didn't carefully plan. Um, what happened is that you deforested, uh, waterways silted up, mm -hmm. um, and you had water security problems, which turned into irrigation problems, which turned into food security problems, and uh, eventually that turns into collapse. And um, the, the NSA in the United States, the CIA in the United States, talk about how increasing mm -hmm. environmental damage in the world will become, over our century, a greater and greater cause mm -hmm. of economic, social uh, destabilization. And I think that you see that um, very cleanly uh, when you look at a contained civilization like Angkor Wat and look at why uh, it met its decline. Mm. I mean, fortunately, now we understand those linkages between environment and development. Um, thank you very much, uh, Peter, for joining us here at VOA today. Very happy to have been here.